Hello and welcome to another of the Driving More Behind the Scenes um, videos and today I get to talk to Doug, the performance analyst, anal analyst um, at uh, Taranaki Bulls. How are you doing sir? Doing very well thanks. Yeah. So um, we had a quick chat before one of the games uh, uh, recently and you showed me the, uh, the computer and stuff on match day but what do you get involved with um, sort of during the week, during training sessions? Well, during training sessions, uh, we video everything the boys do, um, from uh, indoor sessions with clarity um, to outdoor sessions where we run through our, our systems and maps, um, and then they can review that either here or, or they've got the facility to, to look at that at home on their phones or iPads or computers. Mm. So how many cameras do you sort of have set up for one of these for the sort of the, the training sessions um for out it, it varies you know how, how long's a piece of string how, how many they they want um at the game but basically we'll use one on a wide shot for any pattern type stuff um another one for any skill based stuff uh, line outs or um uh, anything like that um and we use a drone to cover the outdoor stuff uh, for looking at our, our shape and pattern mm. So when we've seen those um, anal analyst pieces in the papers where they show uh, some sort of spider cam from above on the on the scrums, do you do that to see to see who's boring in and who's uh, who's behaving? Uh, we've po poked the uh, drone up above scrums and um, we've got a, an extendable pole with a camera on it, which you can operate from an iPhone and things. Um, so to a degree, but um, you know it depends on your budget and your uh, and your focus really. Um, yeah, so we can do that. And it depends what's been happening to our scrum or, or what we're focusing on doing. Yeah. So yeah, talking about budgets, obviously the the Mice Ten Cup runs from sort of August through till October. So basically, sort of like a three month kind of piece. Um, how can you have a full time job working for three months? Uh, I'm very lucky. I'm in a position where I'm part time with Taranaki um, and part time with New Zealand. So I've got. Um, uh, certain roles with different teams and, and, and within two organisations. Um, I look after club rugby leading into the Māori Team Cup and I look after um, the New Zealand Secondary Schools side from a video analysis perspective. There's a tournament I run um, from a video perspective over in uh, Taupo, the under-19s, and also um, I'm lucky enough to have the New Zealand under-20s position as well, so I uh, work with them. So the under-20s, that's going off to the uh, the Junior Rugby World Championship each year and that kind of stuff? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we have uh, several camps as well. So, um, you know, in terms of selection and uh, getting our systems in place with the boys that we're going to take. So, um, yeah, it's fairly, fairly involved throughout the year. Oh, so you've got to have been to, what, what was it, Georgia two years ago and other places like that, so you get to, get to see, get to see not, some, not some different parts of the world. Absolutely, yeah, yeah as I mentioned, very blessed and, uh, yeah, and long may it continue. <laughs> so do you have different... Uh, amount of equipment for that one or do you or is it pretty much the same the same stuff uh it's similar new zealand supply kits um uh and laptops um and a certain array of gear but everything is pretty similar yeah okay and you 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 showed me something that was in a well it was in a bag i'm not quite sure what it was but you showed me that uh, you had had something sent down from the chiefs so you, there is also an element of support with gear and efforts from the super rugby sides as well Yes, obviously we're affiliated with the Chiefs and um, Regan Hall, who's their analyst, comes in um, and uh, supports us um, with gear, keeping in mind that he's looking after other other unions as well, so we all try and um, work in together where we're short, he'll help out and uh, and then uh, obviously send the gear back at the at the end of the season for his use, yeah. And one of the kind of images of New Zealand rugby is that it's all, uh, there is this kind of control centrally and everyone shares information together. So do you, as, as, um, as performance analysts, do you all get together sort of once or twice a year to sort of learn from each other? Uh, we do, yeah. Jason Healy, who runs the New Zealand programme and responsible for all of us, um, he organises uh, frequent get-togethers where he calls on people from um, various backgrounds and, and very educational. Uh, and to a degree, we share... Um, we sort of have a limit and a line with what we share amongst ourselves. Um, we share video views, um, but you know we don't really share any IP. I don't want anybody else knowing what our patterns are or what our systems are. Obviously, um, so well, well, yeah, not the specific systems, but how you look at systems, I guess. And if there's a someone comes up with a new um, piece of software that 
monitors heart rates or whatever you, you share all that kind of information and, or where which angles are yeah absolutely and in, in those environments it's usually outside of our campaigns and everything's very um you know uh, very sharing environment and um if there's a piece of hardware that someone's been using generally it'll be promoted or seen by new zealand and and you know not we're not directed to use it but we're advised that these things are available at such and such a cost if this is the way you'd like to go and uh, and things are recommended or tried in different areas and and we'll either talk them up or down depending on our experiences as well cool. but we're always trying to find that that gold nugget you know software or hardware yeah, no, no. I guess the a good example of that from a different sport was the America's Cup, where the New Zealand team had a managed to get a special drone that could that could track mm. um, the boat much better, and so they could actually see what was going on much easier and that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's finding those sort of things can be yeah can be very key. Um, and then on match day, you so the so for training, do you actually um, track it and sort of map it all up during training, or do you wait and do it afterwards? Uh, the GPS and heart rate monitors are taken care of by the S and C guy, um, so he'll he'll com- They do have live information generally, but um, he'll compile that to a large degree post game. Uh, and with our stuff, we're definitely coding information live, and and the window we get at half time and feeding that to the coaches to um, to look at predominantly um, pattern breakdown errors, things like that that uh, you know provide immediate feedback. The, um, Depending on your resources, how many people you've got involved, how much information you can put in, and uh, you know how much a coach can process while they're watching the game, it's all, you know, it's a, it's a big, big animal. So, so you, I mean, at, um, for the Cherry one, you obviously have two people, or not obviously, sorry, I've seen you have two people um, coding up one of the pre-season games. How many can? So, how 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 much does that kind of grow to for say the All Blacks with the game? Uh, I think in their environment they have two uh, who travel and and uh, are at every game. Um, they have a lot of support from New Zealand in terms of uh, crunching numbers in the background as well and, and we have a lot of resources made available to us as well in the background um, so so on game day um, I've worked and seen other environments where there, there are numerous analysts but it, again it can get quite um, quite clunky I think information um, overload yeah 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 I mean you know there's the essential stuff and then there's the the extras um, and I guess it gets to a point where, uh, in my mind, um, you know, you don't want too many people. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So yeah. that's that's live information that, that gets viewed at half time. Not actually, he doesn't actually sort of look at it in the in the sort of director's box while he's watching the game. It's not that immediate. It can be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But um, yeah, it depends on the environment you're working on, whether you whether you use it uh, live or at half time or. Um, uh, you know, it might only be one one piece of image or one message that the coach wants to get across and reinforce, um, or one opportunity that they've seen that might become available in the second half. So, um, so yeah, you, you make those facilities available, but they're not always used. Yeah. So I remember hearing Rob Baxter, who's the Exeter Chiefs um, head coach in the UK, so that he produced a scorecard or, or a table um, after a game, and they say how many good things a player has done oh, yeah. um, for them to when they walk in. Um, post game, do you provide any kind of tables or, or scorecards that players can see as they walk back in, or help with that kind of stuff? Oh, we have a lot of um, post match information in, in various areas. Yeah, yeah, good and bad, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, so yes, yeah, it's, it's extensive information, um, and again, the coaches will generally filter it down to. But there's such a small window in the week where we actually have the players and access to them. They'll have access to all the information and. Um, they'll be working one-on-one with the coaches and, and they'll be working directly not only with the data and video but uh, the GPS and the, um, you know the, how they've been perceived um, during okay, the so week and so, so not so much um, so not so much public public um, tables more personal information they can access through apps yeah yeah keep in mind every team's got what they desire yep. to get out of a game and their own you know KPIs and things and, and so team and individuals are along those lines yeah yeah I've just gone blank as a player's name but I remember pl- uh, talking to one of the players from, from Auckland and the Blues and he was saying yeah but he sits down prior to a game he'll be in the uh, uh, in the change rooms and he'll have his three or four things mm. that he wants to get out of that game mm. that'll run through in his head and I guess that, yeah, that's all being provided from the coaches which has also come partially from uh, at least partially from the stats that you guys provide as well I guess as part of that yeah yeah, yeah absolutely um, yeah. Yeah. cool and 
I guess finally, how did you sort of get into this? Um, do you have a degree in sports science or one of these sort of things, or how do you sort of become a, a performance yeah. analyst? Yeah, uh, people seem to come from different backgrounds. I was very fortunate. I, um, I did some study in television and video production, um, started along those lines. The course I was doing at the time, um, Graham Murray approached the director of the course in Wellington and asked if there was anybody suitable, and I... I'd mentioned the whole time during the course that I was interested in sport and travel and, and things like that, while most of the other people doing the same course were short film um, or makeup or sound or very specific along those lines. So, so they basically pointed me in that direction and it, and it grew from there. And, and uh, in those days it was VCR players and uh, VHS players, you know, press record on one and play on another. And I was very lucky to be Johnny on the spot when all the video became digitised. And yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, stick around, uh, subscribe, all that kind of stuff for more behind the scenes um, shows. Thank you very much, everybody. Cheers.